There's a bizarre throwaway apologetic that acts as the capstone to way too many discussions about Islamic extremism. It's the kind of thing that's rendered completely irrelevant by even the barest hint of logical scrutiny, and yet I've heard at least a dozen rational, intelligent people offer it up. Now, to be fair, it's usually in the vein of like a conciliatory bone being thrown to Muslim reformers, but it's still complete horseshit. So the apologetic goes something like this. If you were to compare the timeline of Christian development and the timeline of Islamic development, you would see that the younger religion is just acting like a younger religion. If you look at Christianity circa 1400 CE, you're going to find something that looks very similar to modern day Islam from a theological perspective. Now, I want to make an important point about this, and I don't want to be accused of strawmanning, so let me make this clear. I've never heard somebody say this as a way of urging people to like calm down for another half millennia or so and wait for them to figure it out on their own, and they're not offering it up as evidence that there's some natural development that religions go through, and since Christianity calmed down, Islam will inevitably do the same. When I hear people make this point, it's usually being offered as evidence that the religion can be reformed. Right? I mean, we have evidence of a worldwide faith that was every bit as violent and theocratic that had a reformation and eventually learned to live comfortably alongside a secular government. So people will offer this as evidence that Islam isn't beyond saving and that they may very well be an enlightenment away from getting their shit together all on their own. Now, with all that in mind, let's take this argument apart. And it shouldn't be hard because it's based on a sample size of one and it's colored by a retroactively applied narrative that is demonstrably false. See, according to the implications of this narrative, there was some internal struggle within the church that ended with like this enlightened realization that theocracy was just bad for everybody, upon which the church voluntarily ceded power to a secular government so there could be peace and tolerance. They act like the Enlightenment led to the Reformation of the Church rather than the Reformation of the Church leading to the Enlightenment. And I'm not trying to give religion any credit here. The Enlightened bits were always there. We just needed the Church to stop killing all the critical thinkers. The real historic narrative involves the secular authorities ripping power out of the hands of the Church for entirely nefarious purposes and humanity being allowed to flourish once their thoughts were freed from the bondage of pre-scientific dogma. Because the kings might not have been benevolent, but they didn't give a shit which celestial body you thought was in the middle as long as you gave them the pigs you owed them once a year. So what actually happened is that the church started to lose power, and in general, the more power it lost, the better off humanity was. And after all their attempts to reassert power failed, and keep in mind that included wars and inquisitions and shit, they begrudgingly settled into a less powerful role, and they've kept doing that over and over again for, for centuries now. Now, based on that history, we're supposed to see some hope for Islam being reformed? We're supposed to believe that the theocratic religion is more likely to cede power to a secular state after seeing what happened to Christianity? We're supposed to believe that the fundamentalist theocrats are going to look at the impotence of the Western church and think of that as something other than an object lesson in what not to do? But look, my biggest problem with this has nothing to do with how it obscures a logical perception of Islamic terrorism. Now, that's definitely a problem, sure. But the biggest issue I have here is that it paints Christianity as some kind of benign force that's been declawed by its maturity. You know, as though Christian terrorism isn't a real thing in the present day, as if Christianity isn't fully capable of devolving into something far worse than present-day Islam at a moment's notice. Think about how hard this poor horse is pushing on the cart here. The reform the Christian church went through was more like a a post-bankruptcy restructuring. They didn't decide to calm down and get with the times. They were defeated by the times. They were defeated by secular authorities, and they were faced with the choice of either rebuilding as something less powerful or disappearing altogether. But even today, they're looking for every opportunity to turn back the clock to a time when they had the biggest dicks on the block. There are plenty of Christians hell-bent on creating a Christian theocracy where our secular democracy once stood. Look, if there's any lesson the Enlightenment can teach us about how you deal with a theocracy, it's that the procedure for fixing a religion is identical to the one for fixing a dog.